Now, this may look like a beautiful painting. Actually, it's an X-ray of the drug penicillin. It's a technique called crystallography, which is now a century old. It's used for all sorts of things. In fact, it's led to 48 Nobel Prizes, yet the technique remains relatively unknown. Well, with me to discuss this further is Professor Stephen Curry from Imperial College London. He's a crystallographer and structural biologist. And Melissa Hogan is the BBC's science reporter. Welcome to you both. So, Melissa, first of all, a bit of history. Take us from 100 years ago to today and why it was significant. Well, yes, 100 years ago, there was a British father and son duo, William and Lawrence Bragg, who first discovered that when you shine x-rays through crystals, the patterns that diffract on photographic films lead us to understand how structures, how objects are made. And they, they then gained the first Nobel Prize in crystallography, the second, sorry, Lawrence um, von Lau got it first. And they were also the first father and son duo to get a Nobel Prize together. And then 50 years ago, Dorothy Hodgkin first discovered how penicillin was... I mean, in 1943, she first discovered the structure of penicillin. And if it wasn't for understanding the structure, scientists wouldn't be able to synthesise new drugs and help, you know, bacteria resistance. OK, Stephen, let me come to you, because you are a crystallographer. So how important is it as a technique? Oh, it's fundamentally important. It's one of the biggest scientific achievements, I think, of the 20th century, and one that isn't really, really considered by many people because it's been going for 100 years and it's still going strong, still used today, but it has completely transformed our understanding of how the world is made up of atoms and molecules. It was applied first by the Braggs to work out the structure of table salt, which is just two atoms in the structure, but these days it's being used to look, work on the structures of ribosomes, which are gigantic molecular machines that synthesize proteins in our cells and contain over 200,000 atoms. So, and X-ray crystallography gives us the power to see uh, the molecular structure of anything that we can crystallize. Is the technique, I mean, how much has the technique advanced in the 100 years of what you could do with it 100 years ago, what you can do today? So the actual principle is identical to what the Braggs used back in 1912, 1913. What's advanced really is our ability to generate very uh, powerful beams of x-rays. So now we use particle accelerators which are designed and built specifically to generate x-ray beams. And there's a, a facility uh, built in the UK in about 2007, the Diamond Light Source near Oxford, which is one of the best machines in the world at the minute and is being used to drive forward uh, structural biology and structural chemistry I, I don't, I don't know in many we, different areas. I, I don't know whether we've... I, th I think... Is that protein that we've got a picture yes. of? Yes. Yeah. So this is actually a crystal from my lab. This is a crystal of a protein called human serum albumin. It exists in your bloodstream. You have about 200 grams of it in your body and it's involved in transporting fatty acids around the body but it also absorbs lots of drug molecules so it helps with drug delivery quite naturally. And, 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 and having this picture of it or portrayal of it or whatever you, however you want to call it, how does that help science? How does that help understanding? Well the picture you see here is a crystal of the protein and so that's the crystal that you would fire x-rays at and by the x what the crystal does is it splits the x-ray into lots of different rays and we see a pattern of spots on the on the detector and we can do computation analysis on that strange pattern of spots and we can work out exactly what the molecule looks like in three dimensions so for this protein and for many other proteins then people are interested in developing new drugs they can see exactly what the protein looks like and many new drugs are small chemicals which are designed to be just the right shape and have just the right chemistry to stick to a protein molecule and to interfere with its function because that's often what a drug is doing. Absolutely fantastic. And I just, I, I want to ask you the question of why do you think it's, a, I mean, it's, it's you know, crystallography, X-ray crystallography has received, you know, been responsible for 48 Nobel Prizes. Yet why do you think it is sort of unsung? I think it's partly because it deals with atoms and molecules, which are not things that people see in their everyday lives. We know, and we're taught at school, that you know, that's what everything is made of, but nobody really has a sense of their importance or what they actually do, and it's because they are literally beneath our sight, which is why we have to use x-rays in order to see them. Uh, we have to use x-rays with crystals. We can't just pull out a microscope and see the structure of a molecule because they're even smaller than the visible light that we would use. And also, you know, I mean, that is create the most spectacular images. I think these are antibodies. So these are, and the big green object is a virus particle and so if you get infected with a virus then one of the first things that can happen if it's in your bloodstream is the antibodies in the blood may stick to the surface and then that triggers to the immune system this is bad news you need to come over here and mop this up. 
Right. Oh, we're going to show you one more just because it's beautiful. OK, who's going to tell me what that is? <laughs> it's a snowflake. Yes, you, you knew the answer to that, didn't you? Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and who, I mean, who knew that, they, you know, a snowflake could be so complex uh, in it? It's absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for coming into the studio to explain. It is a little more sung now as a result of uh, both of your presence. You hope so. All right. Thank you very much indeed for uh, being here.